just got a call from the church. Apparently, there's no room left for me in the promised land. <laughs> well, if it is their fault, I'm sure they'll bump you to a really nice room in hell. <laughs> I'm not talking about the afterlife. I'm talking about the theme park in Florida. And it's called the promised land? What, do they have a holy roller coaster there? <laughs> No, that won't be finished till the summer. Oh my God, I was kidding. And that's the name of their comedy club. <laughs> anyway, our church group was going, you know, to explore our faith and be closer to God. But that hussy, Etta Marley, she snaked out the last seat on the bus, damn her. Well, if she is damned, I'm sure she'll have a spot in hell and your room will open up. <laughs> hey, Catherine. How was work? Well, you know, same old. My life is a meaningless, endless void, mindlessly filling prescriptions for people who are just gonna die anyway. Especially if you mindlessly fill their prescriptions. What's wrong? Well, you know that guy I used to go out with who worked at the gas station? You're gonna have to be a little more specific than that. He had that webbed toe. Again, you're gonna have to be a little more specific than that. I'm kidding. Yeah, I remember him. Great swimmer. Well, I just found out he's getting married. I apologize for this, but uh, plenty of fish in the sea. <laughs> I know. It's just that, well, it sort of brings me face to face with the fact that my life is pretty stagnant. Nothing ever changes. I have nowhere to go, no schedule to keep. Maybe you're just depressed. <laughs> Yeah, that's probably it. Hey! Who wants some happy face muffins? They worked when I totaled my Geo. Not that I'm not a big fan of muffin therapy. I still see Dr. Ding Dong twice a week, but... Is there something you want to talk about? Oh, it's not a big deal. I just don't have a man in my life right now. Yeah, I know the feeling. <laughs> I'll probably start dating somebody soon, and then I won't have to think about it anymore. Okay, that, that might not be the solution either. I mean, the fact that you don't have a relationship right now may be a good opportunity for you to look inward and find your own happiness. I was in the same place you are. When I was in Los Angeles, I didn't have a relationship. I felt like my life was stagnant. I decided to leave that culture of greed and materialism. As a matter of fact, that was on the sign on the way out of North Hollywood, now leaving a culture of greed and... <laughs> Anyway, I made a choice to leave that superficiality behind and, and get back to a simpler life. In a brand new Mercedes? <laughs> that was a choice of safety, really. <laughs> you know, that 24-disc CD changer allows me to keep my eyes on the road. <laughs> anyway, I think you understand what I'm trying to say. You need to get in touch with you. Get in touch with reality. I can't find any raisins for the muffin, so I'm going to use buttons for the eyes, but... <laughs> and this is very important. Don't eat the eyes. Are you, are you filling her prescriptions by any chance? <laughs> sandbags. It's an old bra. It's talking about the things you're carrying. What, what is that, rice? No, it's rice seed. After the big rains, I look forward to the chance to grow my own rice in the pole vault pit. It's not a short-term commitment. It takes a good four months for a patty to take. Yeah, no one expects rice in a minute. Oh, no, it's gonna be a lot of hard work. But with a little luck and some help, next season when it's harvest time, we might all be able to enjoy a little something... That currently sells for 20 cents a ton. <laughs> hey, great news, everybody. The state track and field finals are gonna be held here at our school this year. 
We're not in them, of course. <laughs> but our team has been asked to get into uniform so they can help serve the refreshments. So, uh, Pam, I'm afraid you're gonna have to shut down your little Uncle Ben's rice pit. <laughs> Great, there's $200 worth of rice seed, shot to hell. $200? It's not like it's a high ticket item. They throw it at you for free when you get married. Well, oh, by the way, Alan, uh, I was down at the pharmacy today. I had to buy some Viaspirin. It's a new kind of aspirin they have. Yeah, no, I've you know, heard about it. It's supposed over. to be good for yeah. headaches. So, <clears throat> anyway, I couldn't help but notice that your sister seemed a little blue. Oh, yeah, she found out one of her exes is getting married. Webby McPherson down at the mobile? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, I was just at the pharmacy getting my Minoxid gin mask. Oh, yeah. yeah sure, they have a little lemon it's now. A... Is your Catherine feeling okay? Yeah. Oh, she's just going through a little transitional period. I think she needs a little boost of self-esteem. Uh, hey, have you ever heard of Percy Moss? Is that what you're growing on the baseball diamond? <laughs> He's a motivational speaker. He's speaking down at the Clark Manor Inn all week. Oh, for crying out loud, Pam. Those things are a waste of time. Did I ever tell you that I spent over $200 on Est back in the 70s? You want to know what I got out of it? A bladder infection. <laughs> Those things are pretty helpful sometimes. I've attended some seminars. You know, I listened to the Tony Robbins tapes when I was traveling cross country, helped me get through the panhandle. I was good enough to get through the panhandle. I deserve to get through the panhandle. <laughs> anyway, I hope this is a good seminar. Oh, yeah, it's all about building up your self-esteem, making you feel like your opportunities are limitless. Oh, have you gone? Nah. <laughs> Besides, you know, parking in the crowd. Seems just kind of overwhelming, really. <laughs> Nice sandbags. Thank you. Sit here. No, I don't want to sit in the back. But everybody else is. Well, that's because they have low self-esteem. <laughs> That's why you can get good seats at places like this. I don't like sitting up so close. What, what if he calls a volunteer from the front row? What if he makes me cluck like a chicken? <laughs> He's not a hypnotist. He doesn't have to be. I am extremely easy to hypnotize. What if he makes me flap my wings? <laughs> you don't have wings. I said I had wings. It's happening. <laughs> OK, just calm down. Just relax. Take a deep breath. Breathe through your beak. <laughs> I'm kidding. Relax. It's gonna be fine. Hey. Hey, I didn't know you were coming. Well, the Amway meeting I was going to was pretty intimidating. <laughs> you guys like to sit up close, huh? No, we don't. Let's go to the back. No, yeah. you two relax. I want to be up close where the action is. I'm stuck in a dead-end job. I'm lonely. I'm afraid of success. I'm Percy Moss. You're too close to his action. <laughs> Girls, you know, when I look out at this group right now, I don't see people, I see sheep. It's happening. I'm going there. Okay, okay no, you're not a sheep, you're a person. Okay, you're okay. But I'm gonna change all that by teaching each and every one of you how to become a fully actualized person. Now, how am I gonna do that? Well, the people here that surround me used to ask themselves that very question. The people that I like to call Percy's Posse. It's very simple. I'm gonna change your life with nine teeny words. I see it, I want it, I take it. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm sure there's more to it than that. There's nothing more to it than that. <laughs> I see it, I want it, I take it. <laughs> now, we only have three hours to cover these nine words, so let's get a cracking, shall we? I. Now, what do I think I is? Am. Ma'am? No, not ma'am, am, who I am. No, we're not talking about what you are. We're talking about what I is. I don't know about you, but I is starting to get a little skeptical. OK, so now we're up to take. 
<clears throat> to take something. <laughs> to take something. To make it yours. Because you deserve it. Now, I see something, what do I do? You take it. No, I want it, and then I take it. I oh, can't take it. <laughs> you can take it. No, I swear, I can't take it. It's been... Two and a half hours in an unventilated room listening to one sentence that was on the poster out in the lobby. And what did that poster say? I think you should give these people their money back. Oh. <laughs> Do you see it? Do you see any money? No, you took it. That's because I saw it and then... You took it. No, I wanted it. Then I... Oh, for God's sakes, he took it. <laughs> And I'm gonna take some more, girls. Let's get those books out there. Posse's on the move. I thought you were at your seminar. No, oh, I left early. Actually, they asked me to leave. It was after I asked Percy Moss to take it and shove it where I couldn't see it. Guy throws out a couple of anecdotes about how successful he is and then uses the fact that we're willing to part with $50 as proof. $50? I know. He must be good. <laughs> he's a total charlatan, taking advantage of the very people that he's pretending to help by selling some catchphrase that doesn't even work. What happened to the rest of my fried chicken? I saw it, I wanted it, so I took it. <laughs> Well, that makes sense. That was amazing. I really got something out of that. Yeah, I always enjoy coming in through the back door. <laughs> Boy, got a lot of merchandise, huh? Got a book, a book on tape, a book on T-shirt. I didn't buy any of it. Percy gave it all to me. So much for your theory that he only cares about a buck. Oh, no, he never even mentioned money. He just asked me to go on the road with him. The road to self-awareness? <laughs> no, to Florida. I'm gonna be one of Percy's posse. I'm gonna be a self-esteem girl. <laughs> hey, now I need some happy face muffins. <laughs>
Okay, common reaction. It's called newbie fever. Often it's not till you get to the inner circle of clarity that you start to appreciate the full extent of his message. The inner circle of clarity? Please tell me that's a long distance plan. <laughs> How much have you spent on this nonsense? You cannot put a price tag on inner peace. Yeah, you know, it's like I said before, I think people just use the self-help stuff <laughs> for, you know, a crutch. I mean, whatever happened to just bottling up your feelings, stuffing them down, drinking them away, and waking up in a jacuzzi on Sunday morning in the suit you put on Friday night? <laughs> Say what you want about it being a crutch, but it worked out for me. I got a date with one of Percy's self-esteem girls. Rusty. All right, she's a maid in the hotel. Thank you. <laughs> Well, it's Percy's last night. I gotta figure out a way to get Catherine out of this cult. Well, if being in a cult means being the best person you can be, then shave my head and drive me to the airport. <laughs> I'll bring the car around. <laughs> my posse's making the rounds again with the books. You can write checks, you can use credit cards, you can buy other merchandise, but it's not about the money. <laughs> It's about a book you can read over and over again because the lessons change as you change. And we can also make change for anyone with anything over a 20. <laughs> We're out of all the I see it mirrors and someone took all the I take it hats. Go into my Winnebago and all of that is right next to the bobblehead Percy dolls. Okay. <laughs> You're doing a wonderful job. All right, wallet's down. Um, I'd like to try something new. I want each and every one of you to tuck yourselves into a little ball. Close your eyes. And I'm just going to let my voice take you through this. We're going to go back, way back, to the beginning of time, your time, when you were just a little bitty baby. I'm looking for someone. She's in here. <laughs> Thank you to all the voices in there. <laughs> Mr. Munn, what are you doing here? Oh, you stay here 20 times in a month and the seminar's free. <laughs> yeah, I figure if Rusty can get lucky, so can I. Have you seen Catherine? Uh, no, I haven't been looking at faces. <laughs> because I'm saying this just for you. Listen, I don't mean to interrupt. And these aren't just words. This isn't just talk. I'm saying this from the heart. Don't mind if I put your heart on pause. <sighs> check. Check one, two. Ba, ba, ba. Um, excuse me, I'm, uh, sorry. Uh, I'm looking for someone. We're all looking for something. Well, maybe, uh, this isn't the place to look. Where else can we look? Uh, you could try looking in your own lives. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, it's, uh, title is right there in the, in the field, you know? It's like, it's self-help. Self comes before the word help. If you put that together, it seems like you should be helping yourselves. Well, excuse me. What do you think you're doing? Ow. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> I know you. Sorry, folks. Um, this woman doesn't know what she wants. Isn't that sad? <laughs> and you want to know why? Because she can't see it. That prevents her from taking it. Oh. <laughs> I know what I don't want, and that's a catchphrase. Life is not a catchphrase. Life is not a catchphrase. Exactly. <laughs> but you don't have to repeat what I'm saying. That's the whole point of life is not a catchphrase. Catch <laughs> oh, I see what you're doing. No, I don't want you to repeat what I'm saying. No, 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 no. I don't want you to repeat Ow. what she's saying. I want you to repeat what I'm saying. She's not trained in this. She's, she's not, not trained in this. <laughs> well, actually, uh, I am a certified guidance counselor, which is probably more than I can say for... Oh, yeah, it just says here you live in Connecticut with your two dogs, Chester and Morgan. Well, actually, um... 
Chester's not with me anymore. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, that's all right. I'm fine. I, I, I'm beyond that now. I'm, no, it's hard to lose a pet, I know. It's... It is hard to lose. Actually, you know, Chester was a lot more to me than just a pet. Sure. I mean, I know, God, that's, it's, it's like a child. What kind of dog was Chester? Chester? He was a Yorkie. Oh, God. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, I know it's so hard to. to... I promised I wouldn't do no, this. No, that's okay. That's all right. You can share with. How did how did you lose Chester? Uh, what? I... In, a In a salad? I sat on it. So can I call you? I think you can do this on your own. You don't need a catchphrase. You've got Morgan, and more important, you've got you. I've still got me. That's good, I can use that. <laughs> I can't believe what you did up there. No, well, I was just trying to tell people that there's no wisdom in just repeating things. Yeah, as they were leaving, they all started chanting, there's no wisdom in repeating things. <laughs> it's one of my catchier ones. Catherine, don't go to Florida with this guy. Oh, no, I'm not going to. You were right, I got swept up by somebody I knew nothing about. I guess I was just trying to do what you told me to do. I guess you learned a very important lesson. Yes, not to listen to you. <laughs> well, sometimes you just have to face your problems head on. And I guess when I found out my ex-boyfriend was getting married, I just kind of shut down. Well, I understand that Webby's reception is down the hall. Do you like making a toast? You want to set the fire alarm? <laughs> ah, student become teacher. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.